There we go. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? We're good. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak today. I'm uh, super excited about the opportunity. I, as um, Paige mentioned, I am an Evergreen alum as well as a staff member. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just excited for the opportunity to, to share a little bit. I still have very fond uh, place in my heart for Evergreen and all the things that it's done for me as a student and as a staff member and still as a community member. So um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, um, bring up the lecture. There we go. And we're good there, I believe. I hope you all can see that. And uh, yeah, so this is my this is this is where I work now. Um, I'm the director of the Lacey Makerspace. I've been here since uh, 2021. Um, just prior to that, I'll actually move to the next screen. That's got a few um, pictures of me. Oh, let's see here. How do I get to it? Uh oh, there we go. Okay. Um, so a little bit about me. I my background is uh, even I've always been a maker and a tinkerer. When I was a kid, I used to take things apart and put them back together, um, and things like that. And then I became a glass blower. Moved. I grew up in Colorado, but moved out here um, around nine two thousand and um, became a glass blower in Seattle for a few years, but I realized I wanted to move to Olympia to go to Evergreen. So I was a student there and I studied in the arts programs. So I was very actively, uh, very immersed in all the arts programs there. I did a, a program that used to be called FOVA, Foundations of Visual Arts, where we went through all the different studios and learned a lot. And I was a shop aide and the wood shop and the metal shop. Um, I still sometimes say that was one of my favorite jobs ever was being an aide at the at Evergreen. Um, the immersive opportunity you have to be a work study student there as well as um, as well as a student was an amazing opportunity for me and really um, bode well for the, my professional careers afterwards. Um, so I graduated in two thousand one, and then I went and did a couple things outside of Evergreen for a few years. I worked for a smaller modeling company. Um, I did some building salvage uh, businesses downtown, and uh, and then I and then I went back and was a staff member at Evergreen for almost eleven years. So I was the arts area manager, and I uh, in that role I supported arts curriculum development and delivery. Basically, I worked with the, the staff, um, the arts staff that worked with the arts faculty, as well as of course all the students, making sure that everything was going well and scheduling spaces and figure drawing models and uh, just helping deliver the arts curriculum as uh, best we were able to to do so. And uh, it was in June of 2021. Uh, I joined. I jumped over here to Lacey Makerspace, and it's been an amazing opportunity to come over here and um, kind of continue all these the culmination of all the various things I've done in my life, both as a student and then post post graduation and um, things I learned at Evergreen have transferred over really well. Uh, I feel like the director of work I do here uh, at getting to do kind of similar stuff, but with the with the greater community at large. So, um, and I'm also on the board for the Olympia Arts Space Alliance. That's another thing I've been doing for a few years now and I'm really proud to be on that board. We advocate for artists in the community, try to, trying to find live work exhibition space. So if folks ever have questions about that, I'm happy to talk about that after the end of the presentation or um, at any time um, after that. So the, the, the crux of what I'm here today to talk about is what is a makerspace and how does that kind of tie into um, entrepreneurship, the creative economy, the community. Um, but I think starting at the basic, beginning, starting at the beginning is what is a makerspace, um, which is, uh, it's, it's a place for collaboration and community, uh, access to tools, um, access to equipment. It's a community hub where meetings happen, um, collaboration amongst members. Uh, there's all sorts of types of makerspaces that exist um, globally. Uh, it's kind of a global movement and um, there's, there's makerspaces that are parts of that are library related. There's makerspaces that are parts of colleges. There's makerspaces that um, like there's Oli Mega downtown, which is more of a private uh, volunteer member ran opportunity. Um, so we're a really unique situation where we're both we are on a college campus and but the 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 St. Martin's, which I'll get into a little bit, the partnerships that we have, the St. Martin's University 
uh, very intentionally wants us to be part of the greater community as well. They see that as a boon, as a bonus for their students to come here, interact uh, as part of their, their educational journey here at St. Martin's University, but also interact with folks from the communities as they can hopefully have that help, help in that pathway forward after they graduate. <clears throat> so as you can see there, our particular mission, uh, which is similar to a lot of missions of makerspaces, which is to empower makers to bring ideas to life and cultivate, cultivate an innovative economy through training and high-tech equipment in a regional workspace for learning new skills. Um, I think we do a pretty good job of that, especially now that we've just uh, reopened after a pretty large expansion. Very excited to share more about that. Uh, so who uses a makerspace? It's almost easier to say who doesn't. Um, lots of folks, everything from hobbyists and homeowners. Um, we have a lot of artists who come here to use the equipment, as well as people who become artists out of this space. We have a lot of small businesses. Uh, we have a lot of innovators working on prototyping products that they're now taking to market. Um, obviously, students and educators. We have um, we do a lot of programs with uh, high school robotics teams and things like that. Uh, we're starting some workforce development programs, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, the makerspace, our makerspace, the Lacey makerspace in particular, we have, uh, oh, right now we have about 200 members uh, in, in the community, but half of them are identify as student and, mil and or military, <clears throat> excuse me, which is very exciting. Uh, and then we also have, we have folks coming here from 17 defensive coats. We have folks traveling here from Aberdeen and Seattle, Puyallup, Tacoma. Um, Span did I mention Spanaway? Um, so it's it's exciting to see that we really are becoming that re regionally known as a as a community forward makerspace. Uh, that that dream is uh, something very important to us. And you know, as now that we have our expansion uh, into our larger space, we're excited to have a classroom space now that could be a really great space for meetup groups and things like that. We have something brewing with Timberland Regional Library, which I'll speak to in a moment as well. Um, so. Talking about kind of the, the greater part of some of the work that I do, especially here as a director and, and some of the connections we're trying to make, I want to speak a little bit to uh, two terms that we use a lot in some of the, in, in a lot of meetings that I attend, uh, a lot of parts of um, the work that we do here is, is supporting creative economy and workforce development. So creative economy, I think, is a really exciting thing that's, that, that's really happening in a lot of cities. I see it happening in our region, which I'm really proud of seeing happen finally, which is um, <clears throat> locally, we've got Lacey, Olympia, and Tumwater, and greater Thurston County area. Um, even Tonino has a creative district themselves now, but they're focusing on the fact of how important the creative economy is and the idea of that, that creativity in creates quality jobs, creates people that want to stay in the community. Um, and that is really that that helps foster a strong economy as well. It's a really economic driver. Again, it brings in quality jobs. People really enjoy their jobs when they're more creative. I know I do. Uh, what I get to do here is pretty exciting. It's never the same day twice. And then there's that cultural and social connection. Um, I'm, again, I'm really proud of what's happening here in this area finally. As I mentioned, I'm on the Olympia Art Space Alliance board. Uh, I, as part of that job, as part of the board that I serve on, as well as what I do here, I, I go to a lot of different types of meetings uh, with city council members, Port of Olympia, um, economic development directors. And we're talking about all these different things. We've got the armory going in downtown. Uh, we have the Arts and Culture Heritage Museum trying to form. Uh, there's Arbutus. There's so many amazing opportunities in this area that I think are really finally starting to be places for folks to uh, explore their own versions of creativity and inspiration and maybe even turn those into entrepreneurial opportunities. Uh, workforce development is another big one, and especially now with our expansion uh, and growth opportunities. So workforce development is uh, another thing that's there's such so Pack Mountain workforce uh, here in town, um, you know, various, again, the city uh, municipalities locally, the Port of Olympia are very motivated to help create new jobs in, especially in, in the trades, uh, bringing in quality jobs. Uh, of course, the pandemic was very impactful as we all know in so many ways, but especially in how it disrupted the workforce and the real understanding of the need again for trades and quality jobs and learning those skills 
I get people all day long who mention uh, needing welders and electricians. And so uh, we are in the process right now of forming some of those partnerships to actually be able to host some of those trainings here at the makerspace and uh, to be able to have uh, again, those quality jobs, uh, have access to, not only access to those, those opportunities in, in a classroom environment, in a training environment, but then to maybe even stay connected with the makerspace and have those opportunities available uh, kind of post certification is uh, to do your own manufacturing or starting jobs out of here, but getting those skills uh, to go get a, that quality job in welding or electricians or um, what else are we working on? Uh, manufacturing, fabrication, cabinetry, uh, all the different things we can uh, tap into there in those pathways we can help support. Um, where I think is important to know what where a makerspace plays part of those two things, but in the greater ecosystem. Uh, like I'm really proud of what the work we're doing to build this relationship already. <clears throat> so with entrepreneurship, we have people who are coming here, starting up their businesses, bringing innovative ideas here for prototyping, which is a service I'll speak to a little bit later. Uh, we, have, we have a company that started out of the makerspace, uh, Somatic VR. They came to us, a business out of Seattle who actually started coming down here to prototype these products. They are an immersive device to enhance uh, virtual reality experiences. And so there's these, there's these units that you can place on your arms and your legs, and it just gives you a more immersive experience. We worked with them and now they're actually, they've passed FCC testing, they've launched their product and are looking to actually manufacture those locally. So that ties into the industry and being able to, again, keep things local, keeping things, uh, you know, the, this region is becoming not only a big thing for creative economy, but also for manufacturing. The, the South Sound area is because there's a lot of development happening here towards industry and manufacturing. And so we're gonna be helping, again, connect those quality jobs, connecting the industry leaders with employers and, and products and prototyping, uh, skills training, those sorts of things which of course leads into the educational opportunity. Uh, we have, you know, we've leveled different tiered classes that we offer, mentoring we're offering. We uh, host a couple of robotics teams with high schoolers. So there's this whole, there, not only is there's this ecosystem that's external where we're connected with the community, but there's this whole internal ecosystem where all these things are happening at once with all these people interacting together and collaborating together. It's a, it's a really fun environment to be a part of. And then, of course, connecting back into the greater community. It's is known. It's a really great maker spaces are known to be spaces that are welcoming to everybody. We anyone from twelve to eighty can be a member here. We have members in those age ranges uh, and everything in between that come here and look forward to that opportunity to collaborate and learn from each other, uh, get inspired. Um, I'm also really interested myself, I'm, I'm calling it for lack of a better term at the moment, but this, I'm calling it a creative consortium and I'm trying to stay in touch with uh, Arbutus Folk School, Lamp Lighters, Hummingbird Studios, Community Print, um, all these different places that are providing opportunities for people to come to and be creative and that we stay connected and support each other. And uh, it's very important. I get people ask me all day long, well, why don't you have a ceramic studio? And I said, well, because our beautist already has one. I don't want to compete with another business. I want to complement and build off of each other and build each other up and connect each other and connect the community to these different really great resources. Um, another membership, uh, another really exciting entrepreneurship opportunity I wanted to share out uh, just real quick, a story. The, yeah, you, it's hard to see here, but these earrings that I'm wearing right now uh, where right soon after I started, a uh, young woman, Bethany, became a member and she started designing these earrings. They're sustainably harvested wood veneer and there's a, core, a decorative cork on top and embedded, embedded between the two is an NFC chip that if you hold up your phone, a smartphone, it will open up a Spotify playlist and it will open up her website. And she is very much about women's empowerment. She teaches chainsaw carving classes to women in Montana in the summers. And so she has this whole website that inter that's an interactive website for folks. Uh, if you just plug in your earrings to your phone, she designed her. She designed and made her earrings here. Uh, my first summer, like I said, I started. She used, primarily used a laser engraver, 
uh, did all her design work, all of her, her uh, production here. And she launched her product at a, a series of music festivals and made almost $30,000 her first summer. So the, the, it's a real tangible thing, the opportunity for in, in entrepreneurship uh, and innovation here. So very exciting. Uh, so a little bit of history about the makerspace, about the Lacey makerspace in particular, how we came to be. Uh, we opened in 2019, um, but there's there were years uh, prior to that, of course, of development and meetings and discussions of what it would like look like to bring a makerspace to this region, or at least to bring this model. And so the three gears you see surrounding us are my pillars of support, I call them. So obviously we are located on St. Martin's University campus. Uh, after working at Evergreen for 11 years and getting to experience their beautiful wooded campus, I just get to work on another lovely wooded campus again. It's great to take walks in the summer around here. Um, so again, the connection here is that they give us a, a discount on the rent of our building uh, They, with the idea that we provide a pathway uh, for their students. We do have a student makers club now forming this year for St. Martin's University as a connection for their students. Um, the Thurston Economic Development Council and specifically to their Center for Business Innovation. If you don't know about them, please look them up. Uh, the Thurston EDC is an amazing organization and officially actually still our fiscal sponsor, our fiscal umbrella. Um, I am, we are officially employees, my staff and I, of the Thurston EDC. They are an amazing organization that connects uh, businesses with grant money and uh, startup opportunities. Uh, the Center for Business Innovation in particular uh, is about business startup, and they have all kinds of support programs from how to write a business plan to accounting, basic accounting services, really amazing opportunity. And I get a wealth of support from them as well. They're, they do a lot of our administrative support. Um, City of Lacey, of course, obviously we are located in Lacey. They too are very eager to make sure that we people understand, even though we are the name, Lacey is in our name, we are not only a Lacey makerspace. We have, uh, again, I mentioned we have members coming from 17 different zip codes. Uh, so we're very proud of that fact. And so is the city of Lacey. They want everyone to come here and feel welcome here. They are also one of our biggest current uh, local operational support. Uh, they give us most of the funding for our operational support so far. We uh, get into funding here in a minute too, but we do, we have some federal and local funding. The city of Lacey has been tremendously supportive in getting us to where we're at so far. Uh, so very, very grateful for these, these three organizations. So the three of these folks met for years and they collaboratively decided on this model that we have, again, with the idea that while we're on a college campus, we're very connected with the community as well. And uh, Lacey itself is trying to develop kind of an innovative uh, ecosystem itself, an innovative community. Uh, there's some growth opportunities happening here in Lacey with uh, bringing some manufacturing here. Uh, as well as development, they're trying to bring in a lot more mixed use housing and more opportunities for uh, small businesses and things to be forming. And so we're going to be part of that, that ecosystem in our location here, sort of centrally located. So um, some of the businesses we've worked with so far, uh, just this is a small sampling, but um, again, talking about the industry and innovation, uh, collaboration, community support. These are various businesses that we've worked with in any number of ways. Uh, Elite Design Welding, um, Design and Welding. He actually teaches some of our welding classes as well as runs his own welding company. We've done some small fabrication work for him. Really proud of some work we're doing with the Nisqually Indian Tribe. We've taught some classes, um, <clears throat> excuse me, with them and done some work. We're actually hopefully going to be partnering with them this summer to do some youth programming. And they now have a Nisqually Indian tribe, uh, now has a national a state park, the Nisqually State Park. We're excited to be maybe helping do some fabrication on some benches and some, some device, some, some things that they'll be having, some signage and such that they'll be having at the park. <clears throat> We've done fabrication jobs for a lot of these folks. We did a really cool project with the Point Defiant Zoo. We made a uh, a, a wizard staff for, as a prop for their summer uh, outdoor wonderland theater program. We've done awards, <clears throat> fabrication jobs again, all kinds of different things. Uh, a lot of these businesses come also here and do their own fabrication now, uh, as well as us helping them do those things. So I'm going to talk now a little bit about some of the services that the makerspace provides. And I'm going to start with first what we call design and prototyping. So getting back into that innovation and startup idea, um, Somatic VR. I spoke to about them a little bit. They 
again, um, launch. They had an idea in mind. They came here. They weren't able to find anybody to help them manufacture their the the devices they need to carry the soft the little programming um, the 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 yes the programming boards basically that they need for the their devices. So they came to us and we helped them design those. And uh, and again, they they're very very successful business already launching those products. Um, but we we've done all kinds of other things. We have a we worked with a woman early on when I started out of she came with she was visiting us out of Seattle, uh, helping prototype a healthcare device. Um, she's still under development, so we can't say too much more about it. But she was working with our team. So I have amazing staff that are incredibly skilled. Uh, Emily in particular, I want to give a major shout out. She's our fabrication specialist. Um, and she actually graduated from St. Martin's here with the master's in mechanical engineering. And so she gets to put those skills to real life use here every day and helping us doing prototype design. So if you have a product in mind, we're going to schedule a time with you. It's a very iterative process. So you're going to have us design something. You're going to, we're going to print it out on a 3D printer. You're going to go test it, you know, or whatever the devices that you need. And you're going to come back and say, oh, I need a half inch smaller or I need the threads to be different or this or that. So it's a real iterative process. And then the idea is that eventually you have a product that you feel comfortable with and proud of and, and take it, taking that to market. The, the exciting thing about the ecosystem that we're part of, again, is, you know, if, if once you're ready, we'll kind of connect you with the services at the EDC, maybe connect you with some of the business resources through the city of Lacey or some of the other local municipalities to help get the device actually even manufactured here in the region, because we're big proponents of keeping things legal. So that's a pretty exciting service. That's That service is really starting to grow more as people are becoming more aware. Um, the other service that we do, there's a, there's a definite distinction between design, prototyping, and fabrication. Um, design work and prototyping is, is bringing a new product to life. Fabrication is one where you may already have something in mind, uh, perhaps making a logo uh, or an award, uh, products like that, um, name tags. We do all sorts of things like that. Again, Elite Welding, you can see he wanted to make these little metal tags. Those are laser engraved uh, images. Uh, that are that were put on steel so that he could weld those onto projects as he completes them or hand them out to his clients as little keychains. We were really excited to do uh, a prototyping job for, excuse me, a fabrication job for at the Olympia Downtown Alliance. We've done that at several other awards for local businesses and organizations. The three you see in the middle there were golf trophies for the South Sound Lacey Golf Championship they did a couple summers ago. Um, and so the next service that we offer is mentoring. So as a member, you, uh, we, our main thing, our tagline besides our mission is that we're here to make makers. We, our first goal is to encourage you to become proficient, encourage you to be the maker yourself. But, um, you know, guess why if we do fabrication, if you're too busy or, 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 you know, don't have the ability to do that. But if you are interested in that and you become a member and you get stuck on, a project, we offer mentoring services. So we're going to provide that one-on-one -on -one time tailored to your, you know, your needs. And we're going to help you with your project, be it from, I'm having trouble with Fusion 360 or Corel Draw or any of the software that can be a big barrier to some of the equipment that we have. I myself have that. I always joke that I'm more the analog maker than the digital maker. Um, I, my staff helped me a lot with that. <laughs> But you can schedule that time and we'll help you get over those hurdles and then you can get back to work on your own project. Uh, so the main thing that we do here, how do you become proficient, is you take the classes and you take the workshops. So when you become a member, we offer what we call basic series classes. All of those classes are free for our members. And we offer the same, basically we offer classes in every specialty area. So we're going to have design classes, which are based on the software to use some of the more advanced equipment. We have uh, we've broken out our woodworking class into several series of ones. There's there's woodworking basics, blades. So we're going to go over the cutting tools. There's basics, finishing, uh, everything we have stained glass. And then we go into having more advanced classes or project-based classes. Those are the make series. As you can see, we offered one in pen turning. We have a stained glass class coming up next month. We have a couple of jewelry making classes coming up. 
And uh, again, with our with our expansion now, we're excited that we're going to be offering an even more diverse array of classes, more leveled classes. Right now, we offer four levels of welding from a, even a virtual based class where we have a virtual welder all the way up to an intermediate level. And then uh, where, where we're building next, the thing we're most proud of is this partnership now coming back to the workforce development. And the idea of having skills training opportunities uh, and bringing in those with that workforce development classes here. There are, we used, we had one of the, right before we started, we had a class, there was a construction boot camp, boot camp class that was hosted here as part of um, a partnership with Pac Mountain. And um, I'm trying to remember if there's another organization as well, but we wanna bring those types of things back. We're very excited that we're actually gonna be partnering with an organization called AJAC. Uh, they're based out of Seattle and Spokane, but they're starting to pr produce more offerings down in this area as well. So we're going to be developing, they're developing a pre-apprenticeship program in advanced manufacturing here at the Makerspace, as well as hopefully many other classes once we get this thing going. And the, again, the idea is that classes will be designed here specifically for advanced manufacturing type skills. So you're, you're, gaining, you're gaining the skills here you're gonna get that certification, those credentials that you need to then go get that quality job. And so we're we're working on those partnerships now, as well as a lot of youth programs. We're really excited to start developing more youth programs with high schoolers, again, providing them that opportunity and that pathway into trades jobs, into uh, better opportunities to seek in colleges as well and, and, and all of that. So uh, a little bit, just uh, how does it work here? Uh, anyone, be, anyone can become a member, anyone 12 and up. And that's our standard membership is $50 a month. We do have discounts again, as you can see for students, military tribal members. Uh, we do have different sorts of packages available and there are perks of becoming a member. Uh, as you can see, we, so, so in addition to our membership charges, we do have a machine time cost on a lot of our equipment that basically covers some of the more, the consumables and the materials, the maintenance associated with those. Uh, I'll get into just a minute some of the equipment that we have, but it helps cover the, the, um, the, the, the filament that we use for the 3D printers and the resins and things like that, as well as the maintenance costs. And the reason we do it that way, it's a good model that a lot of makerspaces do in that uh, it helps keep the membership base low. And it's that way you kind of, it's a pay to play sort of situation. So if you're not somebody who's gonna use some of the more have the, the some of the machinery that might have a higher equipment cost, you're not going to be paying that cost. That that's a more to the individual. But so that thirty time thirty dollar machine time credit is sort of to give everyone an opportunity to play a little bit and see if it's something that you like. And then, uh, you know, if anything goes above and beyond that, we just bill out on a monthly basis. And then of course we offer discounts on all of the on many of the other services we provide. Uh, I forgot to mention in our classes, the other the other thing we're building out right now is we have an online teachable platform, which we're filming. We're in the process right now of filming and actually working with another Evergreen alum, uh, Jenna Mason, to film a series of instructional classes uh, to get online. And so not only do you have the, the basics classes in person, but you can also if you're if you're like, oh, what was that one point I missed or I want you know I'm not quite confident on, you can go watch the teachable version and then come back in. So. Uh, the other thing I really want to speak to, kind of again, bringing back the notion of uh, ecosystem, greater ecosystems, you know, and communities, the college collaborations is, is a big part of makerspaces and something, again, we're really proud of here in our makerspace. Uh, we do have, um, we are, again, we have a St. Martin's Club here and the idea of partnering with clubs at the other, at the other colleges, SPSCC and Evergreen happy to host clubs who maybe want to use some of, have access to some of that advanced equipment, or we have a t-shirt printer, direct, direct, direct to garment printer, you could make your own t-shirts here for your club, those sorts of things. Um, the idea of, you know, how the other ways that we can collaborate or, um, you know, things like design challenges, or if there's STEM activities, uh, hackathons, uh, really great opportunity to just bring the students here and bring our experience to the, to the universities as well. Research projects, of course, again, that may have an element of, of some advanced equipment that they may not have on the, on the campus. I personally have this vision. I, I really love the idea of designing a capstone postgraduate program. 
I know myself, I graduated from Evermean in 2001. And again, I was very active in the art studios. And it was, it was difficult graduating because all of a sudden, the access that I had to this amazing equipment and all these resources, I didn't have anymore. And I was like, oh, now what do I do? And um, I was lucky to get a job and um, where I did, I, I've been very fortunate, I feel like in a lot of ways where I've kind of managed to keep on to that, you know, with doing construction and staying in building salvage and now working here. And of course, coming back as a staff member at Evergreen. But to have the idea of kind of a capstone postgraduate opportunity where maybe a student who's in their senior year that is interested in marketing or fabrication or uh, even shop management. You know, I remember when I was working with Dawn and uh, some of the other staff at the shops at Evergreen, students were like, I want to do what you do. I want to learn how to manage a shop like this. And so we would try to uh, evolve some of our experiences with to really bring them into that, that, that as well as a pathway. And so maybe their senior year, they're doing an internship, externship type of opportunity where they're working with us. And then even in that post year opportunity, they're still, if they say if they wanna do fabrication, they can be working with Emily and my other staff, working on those client services, doing that design work, helping us with fabrication, which will then get them that, you know, help them get that great opportunity at another company or even start their own business. So that's an idea that I have. And then another exciting thing that we're developing right now with Evergreen uh, is with Scott Morgan, uh, the director of sustainability there. We are hopefully developing, we're working in the early stages still of developing a fix it fair that we wanna have here. We're gonna host here at the Makerspace in May. And I don't know if I spoke to that yet, but fix it fairs are a thing a lot of makerspaces and hackerspaces fab labs do where it's a, it's a community day where people bring their items say you need a lamp to be rewired or a favorite shirt or blanket that needs to be sewn. So we're gonna have specialists here volunteering their time for the day. And you get to interact with those folks, interact with the space, get those items repaired. And uh, and then, yeah, and bring those things. And so we're really excited that Scott and I are in their early stages trying to develop that and get some students involved in that as well. Um, so we'll, and we'll also be working with probably some folks from Lily Mega and Arbutus and um, bringing that all here. So it'll be a really fun community day event. Um, See, so yeah, I'm going to speed a little bit along through some of the rest of this because I, I do want to make sure to leave time for questions and answers at the end. But I'm going to talk a little bit about the actual space. So that's our building. Again, we're on St. Martin's campus. We're located in a building called Zabril Hall. We're also number building five. So it's on Barron Drive. Um, and those are those pictures at the bottom of our newly expanded space. So we're very, very excited for this is what the, we're very, very proud of right now. It's been two and a half years in the making. So soon after I started in June of 2021, uh, in September, we received our first million dollar equipment grant from the federal government. And that was a game changer, uh, which is a word I've used a lot lately. But uh, that yellow space that you see in that left picture, the um, the, that says main workshop, that was the only space we've been operating out of for the last two years, uh, two and a half years uh, since we opened in 2019. And um, yeah, that's been a lot to cram 185 members into and they didn't have a lot of power and we were sharing the building with the facilities department. And so when we got that equipment grant, um, the college was great, gracious enough to negotiate the opportunity to relocate their facilities department, um, the recognizing the need to build this community uh, space even larger. So we got more, we got another million dollars in federal funding through the Senate uh, omnibus funding last 2022, last December. And we just finished this month or just, uh, just last month now in January, we just finished our expansion. So we went from 3,700 square feet to 9,500 square feet. We now occupy the entire building. We now have separate spaces, we have a textiles lab, we have a classroom, we have a digital lab and an industrial metals. And I'll show you some pictures of all those spaces, but you can see there are some pictures of the space under construction. Um, I couldn't be more proud of the team we worked with, Forma Construction to Bonnie Hart. Um, again, the, the amount of support we've gotten from our pillars of our foundation, uh, excuse me, our founders, founders uh, between the three, the college and the city and the EDC has just been tremendous support in making this happen. Uh, so we have the general workshop space, which or wood shop workshop space. You can see some of the equipment listed there. I want to speak specifically to a couple we're really excited to get. Um, so not all this equipment we have yet. We are we still have about a year to buy the rest of the equipment off of this grant, the equipment grant. 
Uh, but we have on the left side, you see there, we have the uh, CNC router. We're getting a large format CNC router. So you can get a full sheet of plywood or full, you know, up to four by each uh, sheet of, of, of material and cut it. It cuts very precise, very uh, precision, repetitive type patterns. So that's really used a lot in cabinet making, uh, again, sign making, uh, very intricate patterns and designs. The other really exciting things are the CNC, which is, stands for commute, Computer Numerical Control. So that's, you're, you're designing the work in a 3D modeling program, which then communicates with the equipment. And those devices, as you see, that's used in prototyping, that's used in advanced manufacturing. Those are the kinds of things that the folks that are going to be partnering us with for workforce development are really excited about. But even our, reg even our members who might be interested in fabricating their own products, we'll be able to do that here soon. We do have a small scale, we could, it's called a pocket NC right now. It can do about a three inch cube of soft metals, acrylic, wood, and so it's a um, three axis, oh, sorry, it's a five axis mill and it, so you can do some pretty elaborate designs with that as well. Um, next is our industrial metal studio. Uh, that isn't quite ready yet. That will be coming in March. We've got some, uh, some ventilation equipment that's been on back order but we're excited for that one. But uh, two main pieces of equipment in there that are pretty exciting and used in innovative technologies is the CNC plasma cutter. So as you can see there, uh, you can cut intricate patterns uh, and signs and things. My husband and I are actually excited to start using that again. We would uh, build a gate. We're gonna do a very decorative gate um, for our house. And then we have the ProtoMax which is a very exciting piece of equipment. Uh, we have a small version of it, but this is the same type of device that they're gonna be using at Boeing and aerospace uh, uh, engineering type programs. The Protomax uses garnet and uh, force-fed water to cut any, any material up to one inch thick. So it will cut steel, glass, tile, stone, uh, like I said, up to one inch thick. The matrix we have is only a 12 by 12 inch surface, but the nice thing is that all this equipment is this it's a pathway towards those other larger manufacturing jobs because you'll be able to say I know how to do this this version uh, and, and then most of the companies will be very excited to have that that skill. Uh, we have a digital lab uh, which has all the additive technologies so we have different types of 3D printing. The what FDM SLS and SLA mean of course so FDM is fused deposition modeling. SLS is selective laser sintering, S, um, and then we have SLA, which is stereolithography, which is resin printing. So the main thing to know about that, if you uh, don't want to nerd out too much, is that each one of those is a different level of, or quality of print, as well as maybe the strength of it. So we have a carbon fiber printer, which is a, which prints in a very strong material. So that's really what you might do if you're prototyping is you're going to come in and do something on, uh, you might use one of the faster, less expensive material, the FDM printer, do a few iterations on that, and then to move up to some of these more advanced technology printers to get a more refined print to really test out your product. Uh, we also have laser engraving. Um, the, the thing in the lower left corner there with the little bird in the clouds, that's one of my projects. I still make those. I, they're a little articulating diorama boxes, all of the parts of that are cut on a laser cutter. My husband and I design the parts together. We use the laser cutter here to cut those parts and then I paint them and assemble them by hand. So opportunities to again to use a lot of different technologies in one place. The spaces that I'm most excited about that we haven't had until we have this expansion now is we have a new textiles lab opening up. So again, we have a direct garment printer, which you can print, you can create your own image uh, from Midjourney or bring your own logo over from a computer and embed that ink into the t-shirt or bags, those sorts, of, those sorts of things. We have an embroidery machine, which is great for doing patches and logos and all kinds of fun things so that can do up to six different colors at a time. And, uh, and again, uses a computer image to, uh, produce, to produce that product. And then in that same space, it's sort of a hybrid flexible space is a classroom and workshop space. Uh, something that's really popular right now is our stained glass offerings. We do have a class coming at, last I checked, I believe there are still two seats left, um, but that's a really great opportunity to um, take, those, take those classes stained glass. We're also getting a large printer plotter. So you can do large prints here. Uh, we're also getting a laminator so you can make stickers 
Uh, stickers are very popular. I have my own on my water bottle all the time. <clears throat> and that virtual welder, which I spoke to a couple of minutes ago, where you put on the goggles and it's an immersive experience, saves on consumables and gases and metals. You're going to get that muscle memory. And then we're going to take you into this, the welding studio where you're going to practice the same, same, same type of welds, but with real material and then build up from there. And um, yeah, so con this is this is my just kind of the information here uh, where we're at and our hours presently, our main phone number. Um, and I wanted to announce that we're hiring, which I'm really proud of too. We have a position open right now. If that QR code works or not, but I can share with you the link later. Uh, we are hiring for a volunteer and training specialist. So uh, a lot of makerspaces rely on volunteer help. Uh, in addition to their staff to extend their hours and to help their members, uh, all of those to help teach classes. We are uh, looking for someone to help us with that that can help with orientations and, and everything. So it's a full-time position and we're very, very looking forward, much forward to bringing someone else on our team. And um, what else? I think I just wanted to share one more quick story about myself um, when I spoke to the, the opportunity of um, learning in a space like this and, and learning at a place like Evergreen. So I, one of my first jobs after Evergreen was to go work for a small remodeling company. And um, one of the interview questions is, well, what's your experience building houses? And I didn't have any experience building houses at that time, but I was able to say to him that I just got, you know, I just graduated from Evergreen and I was, I was a student aide there and I helped, I was a, you know, I was a TA for some of the classes and I made my own artwork there. And I said, I make a lot of little boxes and, and houses are just big boxes basically, but I know how to use the tools. I'm comfortable with tools, I'm proficient. I you know, I know what, which tool does what. And he, he was without even finishing any of his questions, he said, you're hired. And I'd like to think that the makerspace is that similar kind of pathway where we have the opportunity again, as I mentioned, like we might only have a small scale, um, some of our equipment might be on the smaller scale when it comes to the water jet or maybe our laser engraver presently can only do 18 by 24 sheets, but you're learning the competency, the proficiency, the software, the language, and that's going to give you that pathway to start your own business, to, uh, you know, to get a job someplace else that, that gives you that leg up. And, um, and we're so connected uh, with so many other resources in this area that, you know, would help provide that pathway as well. So that's that. I'm going to stop sharing and I would love to hear if there are any questions. Yeah, so we're going to open the floor for questions, folks. Um, feel free to unmute or raise your hand or you can stick uh, your questions in the chat as well. I can start us off if people need a moment to type in the chat. Michelle, I'm wondering if um, the Lacey Makerspace or, you know, between the partnerships, uh, some of the community partners you talked about um, are looking at um, sustainable sourcing for some of these materials. I know that it's a yes. big challenge, um, especially since a lot of these machines probably, I'm assuming, need more raw materials. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, thank you for asking that. That's a good question. Um, yes, we are. Uh, we actually are uh, green business uh, certified ourselves, and we do always try to source first sustainably and locally. That's 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 a big personal and professional goal of mine. Uh, you know, some materials we can't, of course. Um, it is a little bit harder, but we are always working on finding ways to recycle those devices, those those materials as well when we're done with them. Um, but as much as I can, at a minimum, it is about sourcing local. A big part of what I'm doing is, uh, so one of the amazing things about Evergreen and the shops that you all have at your, your availability there is a lot of those materials are, a lot of the, the materials used for your classes are provided there. The wood shop has an amazing selection of wood. Um, we don't have that same ability really to do that here, mainly because I can't possibly even anticipate everything everyone would need. But I am building some local connections, uh, Bayview Lumber. Uh, I'm working on uh, several other local sources to, to you know, you know, if you become a member, you flash your membership badge, they're going to give you a discount. So you're getting those materials at least hopefully somewhat sustainably or locally. 
uh, and and we are trying to build, you know, that's one of the things that I would like to have once I have a volunteer coordinator is maybe I have a volunteer who's really passionate about finding out more sustained ways that we can be even more sustainable. So that might be something that they could do for us 10 or 15 hours a week or a month or something is just help us build those stronger connections even with how do you recycle PLA? How do you recycle used filament um, or reuse it even? Uh, I, I'm eager to find out even better ways to do that. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. As usual, I've got a million questions. So if we don't have questions <laughs> from the audience, I will ask all of mine. <laughs> I couldn't have been that thorough in my discussions. So I'm sure <laughs> See, there's no question too 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 small or silly for me. I'm I really I would love to hear anything anyone has for me. So I'll ask my next question uh, while we're waiting again. Um, you know, you you and Paige were actually kind of talking about this before we opened the waiting room, but could you talk a little bit more about or talk about um, you know, if you've had members come in who have body care um, products, or maybe they're working with food um, mm -hmm. and they're having to, you know, prototype packaging. Um, is that something that you see at the Lacey's Makerspace? Absolutely. Yeah. I wish, uh, I wish I had an example with me, but I was talking about the woman who designed these earrings here. Um, she actually came in uh, the second summer to sort of upgrade her product uh, showcase a little bit. And she she was using her laser cutter to actually laser engrave or to laser etch in or laser cut her logo into hard hard cardstock that then became the 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 uh, devices that held her earrings. And she was creating the displays here that you know that would then hold the earrings uh, on them. And so again, there's so many different levels. For, even if you have even if you don't think there's any way that you could use the makerspace or a makerspace for your product. There's got to, there's, there's ways there's, you know, again, the idea of using us for, uh, you know, designing stickers, or logos, you know, bags or, or things like that. Um, but we, we've had a few folks come in. Uh, I, I wish I could remember exactly. I should have asked Emily before I started, but there was a woman who's coming in with uh, designing a little case. Uh, she was doing something, I believe, with uh, sewing and she was looking at a way to make something to make, help her do her job quicker, better. Uh, and, and you know a little more a little more efficiently as well. But uh, we have another woman working on. Uh, she was working on something to do with some readers and maybe have the ability to to move one of the, one one eyeglass off, the, click, clicking with magnets. And so because she like me, I need readers now uh, that you should pop off and do your makeup and then come back and do that. And so um, yeah, we have just it, 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 nothing's off the table. Oh, I know one of the ones I wanted to meant to mention, which isn't quite to your point, but I just wanted it. I was excited to say we have a. We had a member come in for a while who refurbishes pachinko machines, which are, if anyone doesn't know, they're basically kind of upright pinball machines. And so he would go out and find them in various states of disrepair. And he would work with uh, our staff to fabricate a certain part that might be broken on that machine. So he would 3D print it or we would cut it out of wood or whatever. And then he would utilize that part to repair that machine. And then he could upsell that machine as well. So we have, it's a, it's a pretty cool thing. The thing, the ideas that people bring here. That's awesome. That idea of refurbishment in particular. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, what is the habit or skill that you think has made you the most successful? Ooh, that's a good evergreen question. Um, I would say, well, uh, most recently, uh, patience <laughs> and, and, uh, and I, I would say having having a little more faith that it, things will work out. I think um, I, I learn and and getting over imposter syndrome. So it's maybe a multi layered answer, but um, I'll speak first to that one because I did mean to touch on that before. Like uh, I know when I first started this position, um, and even when I started at Evergreen, I remember uh, when I started as a position there, I remember scribbling in one of my notebooks. Uh, I feel lost because. <laughs> I was sitting in one of my very first uh, kind of upper management meetings and I was like, I, they're using all these acronyms I don't understand. They're, there's all these things like, why did they hire me? And um, I just, I learned to kind of uh, calm, I, especially it's taken years and I'm still working on it, but I've, I've calmed, I've calmed that inner voice. And I just, I believe that I am, I am the best person for the position. I'm doing the best I can. I'm here to learn too. I'm human and I'm going to make mistakes, but to me, it's how 
that's maybe the best answer is it's how you learn from the mistakes. I think that makes you a good artist. I think that makes you a good uh, human is how do you learn from the mistakes that you make when you make them, you know, and have it, 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 it um, approach them with grace and patience for yourself. Uh, that's, that's the big one for me. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, next question. What kind of mindset slash expectations do you recommend for entering a makerspace? Uh, curiosity. Just, just plain old curiosity. You don't have to have anything more than that. You know, if you don't feel like you, yeah, I can't do that. I mean, I remember even working at, at Evergreen for 11 years and students would come in sometimes and they would just be like, so nervous as soon as a table saw would turn on or something because you know it's their first time in a shop environment like we're here to help you get over that so all you have to do is just come in with curiosity and willingness to learn and we'll take it from there we're going to help you find your path we're going to help you feel comfortable we're going to um you know find you the right people to partner up with and um and, and help you build those confidence help you build that those skills I have another question. <laughs> um, say you have an idea of a design for a product in mind, but you're, I mean, I'm just thinking like if I were to have a product in mind, I'm not an engineer, I'm not a designer in my expertise. Do you help support folks who are maybe not not far enough that they have like a design on paper that then they could replicate manufacturing wise. Yes, absolutely. That's where that proto that design service comes into play. And that's where, you know, so the so way that that service works, I can maybe I speak to it just a, briefly a little bit, a little more clearly how that works is uh, you have an idea in mind again. So there's the difference between like fabrication might be where it's kind of something that's already little bit of under development work, but design work is like, I have something brand new in mind and this is going to be a kind of game changing thing. You're going to make an appointment with, uh, with Emily or one of our staff. She'll, she'll, she'll figure out if it'll be her or one of our other folks that you'll meet with. And that the first, the first thing we do is just a free half hour consultation. So it's just like, what's the viability of this project? You know, let's let, you know, if you can bring it on a napkin, even, we want you to have some idea, like how, what might you see this material, this thing being built with what kind of materials? Um, what, what's it for, you know? And so if you can kind of bring in some just foundational things, uh, we'll help take it from there. And we're going to get it from here to, you know, somewhere where we can actually maybe get it into, you know, it's something you can hold in your hands and take from there. And again, we'll connect you to some of those other resources we're connected to between all the, our pillars of support. So. Great, thank you. Another yeah. question in the chat. Can you go over the online course? Could I design something from two states away remotely? Oh, um, theoretically, I, I yeah, that, I'd love to, if you know, whoever asked that question, please feel free to email me afterwards, you know, um, info at and or my name, Michelle at lacymakerspace.org. Um, I'd love to kind of flesh that out a little bit more, but um, I don't see why not. I mean, because a lot, especially if it's a lot of design work, uh, that can be done anywhere, right? If you have the software or if it's something that's compatible with the stuff we have, we could easily do uh, some kind of an online consultation uh, and theoretically even print that product and, and mail that out. So I, I don't think, I don't see why that would not It'd be kind of fun to say that I have uh, multi-state uh, users using the makers, using our resources. So love to try. Awesome. I think we have time for maybe one more question if um, anyone has a burning question. I have one. Um, I was curious about some of the manufacturers that we have in the area. Um, you mentioned, you know, if someone came to you for a prototype and you completed that, that next step would be uh, referring that person to some of our local manufacturers to get that product made. Um, mm -hmm. Are there any manufacturers that are here in Olympia that could mass produce a product or something like that? I I am confident there are. That's um, kind of one of my next things now that the expansion is getting behind us is to really better understand the manufacturing in, you know, who is available in this region. I do know, um, so that's one of the great things, the other, the other really great connections I have with the EDC, 
they do so much of that research. That research, uh, they are a tremendous resource for uh, learning that kind of information. That uh, they, they, that's what they do is that 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 research. Who are the manufacturers in the Thurston County area? Uh, they'll even, you know, they'll, they they look at it from a macro and a micro lens. So who's in the state? Who's in Thurston County? Who's in Olympia? Who's in Lacey? And um, so we have lists of those manufacturers, and it is multiple pages long. There are definitely many, many, many good manufacturers in this town. And the nice thing that um, I think is kind of exciting is that there's a lot of small manufacturers in this town. There's definitely a lot of, I mean, in, in general, even in the state, we all think of, we all know the big ones, right? We all know Boeing and SpaceX and some of these, you know, these large, big industry drivers, um, employee drive, employment drivers in the area. But um, I forget this, the exact number, but it's, it is a, it is an, significant amount of manufacturers in the state and in this region that are, you know, 10 employees and fewer that have, you know, that are eager to to create those opportunities and, and partner with folks. And um, I'm starting to just getting to reach out to some of those folks and get to know who they are in this area. So I unfortunately don't have more answers uh, specifics, but um, check with me next month and I'll have that list. <laughs> Awesome. Well, uh, I'm going to take a moment um, to ask our audience to um, share some appreciation. Michelle, thank you so much. You can put in the chat um, celebration emoji in uh, <laughs> your Zoom window and mute yourself. Michelle, thank you so much for spending um, this Friday afternoon with us and your, sharing your wisdom and your expertise and the amazing work that you and the Lacey Maker State Space are, are doing. It was my pleasure. I hope to see you all soon, either on campus. I need to come out and see you all. Um, and of course, come visit us uh, anytime. We do tours every Saturday morning. Uh, I should have mentioned that every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. We do do tours. We have a sign up sheet online, uh, which uh, we, we put the capacity on that at eight just to kind of try to keep too many folks. But if you do show up, we're, we, you know, we'll, we'll do our best to host more, more than that even. So come by any Saturday morning, learn more about us, make an appointment with me and my staff anytime. Uh, any way we can collaborate and partner with anybody, we're always happy to. So thanks so much for the opportunity. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, folks who are here in my class, please stay on for just a few minutes. Um, folks who are not in my class, but joined us today, we look forward to seeing you again uh, next Friday. Thank you, Michelle. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye.